Good morning guys, how's it going? It's Morgan from Highland Cycles coming to you with another weekly schlag. It is a beautiful Tuesday morning and we are ready to rock and roll. We got lots of work to do as you can see. We'll be uh, bringing you along. If you're new to this channel, if you're just tuning in, you clicked on something that looked interesting, maybe I made a good thumbnail, um, join us. This is my weekly uh, vlog for the shop or schlag. And uh, yeah, we're just a little motorcycle shop here in Western Colorado, trying to do our best to keep people riding their dirt bikes, working on their dirt bikes, um, trying to unlock mysteries of being a mechanic because honestly, this stuff isn't all that hard uh, if you just take your time. If you enjoy this kind of stuff and you like what you see here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It really does help us out a ton. Anyway, let's get on with the week. So, let me tell you a little bit about this 500 and a little bit about the state of Colorado. I don't know where you're from, but here, especially in Western Colorado, lots of people like to make their dirt bike street legal. And the super cool thing is, it's actually super easy to do. Um, now, if you talk to people who've been living in the state for a really long time, they'll complain about how hard it is because there's a few more hoops that we have to jump through now. It used to be absolutely ridiculous, like you just, all you needed to do was get a VIN verification saying that yes, that is the VIN on the neck and this is the piece of paper that says that's the VIN. That was it. Um, and then you'd go into the courthouse and you'd sign an affidavit saying that it was equipment compliant. Like they wouldn't even look at it. And they'd hand you a title. <laughs> uh, for instance, I had an 07 YZ450 with a title and a license plate even though it never even had a fake headlight on it. So, this sucker though, let me tell you about what it takes to do that in Colorado now. Uh, so this bike came with a headlight and tail light. It has to have that. It has to have a brake light. So we put a brake light switch on the rear brake. Makes the light get brighter when you hit it. A mirror, DOT legal tires, which we installed and then took back off. We installed them, had them inspect it, and took them back off, and a horn. And let me show you something. But it kept, it's a bumper, that's just that. Get your jack. What's happening, man? This right here counts as a horn. <laughs> and these things are like eight bucks, 12 bucks on uh, wherever I got it, Amazon. Um, and the cool thing is, see here at the shop, we just keep one of these. You strap it to your bike. When the officer shows up to do the certified VIN inspection, um, you know, it's hanging here on your thing. And we go, there we go. The cop says, yep, the horn works. Checks on the DOT tires, make sure the brake light works. All that's good. They hand you a stack of papers and you're good. See here at Highland Cycles, what we offer is if you don't want to hassle with that and try to line up the appointment with the officer and get it all done or whatever, and you don't want to buy a horn, you can just wheel your bike down like this gentleman did, hand it to us, say, I will see you in a little bit, and we'll say, all right, we'll take care of everything, get it all done, get the paperwork done. All you gotta do is come back, grab your bike, I hand you the stack of papers, you get insurance on the bike, you go down to the courthouse, hand them all that stuff, they hand you a title, you get a license plate, you're good to go. So anyway, something we offer here, uh, again, it's one more reason to live in Colorado because uh, it's awesome. You can't do that in California. I know that there's lots of other states you can, um, but things that you don't have to have, you don't have to have blinkers, you don't have to have a speedometer, um, you don't have to have a high and low beam, so it's pretty cool. All right, guys, so first project for me is the Venerable DR250S. Um, super clean one, actually. Chris Abbott's bike, he bought it. It's super clean, super nice bike. Uh, but it doesn't run that good. And he replaced all the parts in the carburetor um, with the carburetor kit, which is good. They usually are pretty good. I'm not sure which one he went with was all balls or whatever. Um, seems good. I got it apart. Looks uh, pretty clean in there, like he did a good job. Um, but one thing he didn't do, well, a couple things I'm going to check. First of all, I want to check the uh, vacuum slide. So really all you really need to do well we're going to take the top off and look at it and inspect it but 
one thing, the first thing you want to do is just push up on it like that and make sure it kind of moves smoothly, but also not too fast back down. So seems good. Um, but what he didn't do was drill this out. That is the fuel screw adjustment. And it comes clogged up like that from the factory to keep you from touching it because they think that they know better than you or me. So I don't agree. We need to take that thing out so we can adjust that fuel mixture at idle uh, because uh, you need to. It's, <laughs> it's pretty critical for these things to run right. So I'm gonna pop that thing out. So if you take a look actually here, um, you can see it's got a hole in it, uh, but it's really, really small and super hard to get something in there. So I'm gonna take this drill um, and I got a really nice little drill bit on there that's real sharp. I'm just gonna go really easy through that brass. We've gotta be careful because um, if you go too fast, it'll hit the screw and mar that up. So we're gonna go super easy on that and then pop that out. Also, just quick product placement. This is in no way uh, sponsored by Snap-on at all. In fact, <laughs> I have given Snap-on way too much money, but this thing is ridiculous. It's super lightweight. Oh my gosh, these new brushless motor cordless things are amazing. So it's not one to come right out. That's all right. We're going to take this drill. Since we got a nice hole starter, we'll just get the next bit size up. Go up another one. There we go. Came right out. A lot of times that's what happens. Um, the bit will grab and once it gets thin enough, it'll grab it and pull it out. Uh, if the pick works, that's great. What you don't want to do is pry real hard because you can break this real easy. Oh, by the way, look what Zach Sheets is working on. <laughs> he has to do fork seals on the gold wing because I made him do it. <laughs> Because he went and watched motocross this weekend and I didn't get to. And so, <laughs> therefore, he's in trouble. He's working on gold wings and four wheelers the rest of the month. <laughs> yes. So, anyway, now, got that out. We'll clean that up. The other thing is, since he didn't take that out, that means he didn't pull it out and check the O-ring. There's an O-ring on the bottom of that thing. That means he didn't check that, which means it could be bad, which means it could be causing some of this problem too. So um, I'm also heating up the ultrasonic cleaner, so we'll get that all done, cook this thing, get it back on there, and hopefully the DR will be good to go. All right, so waiting on the Suzuki. While I'm waiting on that, I'm going to rebuild this KTM Kian PWK carburetor. Uh, nothing super special about this. I'm not going to film all of this, um, but, uh, well, I might film it. Um, if I do, you know what, I probably, I'm actually going to film this, but I'm not going to put it in the schlag um, because there's this, whatever, there's too much going on and there's lots of other things going on. Um, but I will make an in-depth video on rebuilding a Kian PWK. So stay tuned, look for that. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because that'll be up. Um, but I do want to show you guys something real fast for the schlag. So... A lot of times we get carburetors in here and the flow bowl screws look like that because someone used the wrong size screwdriver or something like that. Oh, by the way, that is not a number two Phillips. It is a JIS number two. So that, that's what you need to have in your toolbox if you're working on carburetors. But if something like that comes to you and you're looking at it, these things are awesome. Uh, these ones are the ones that I got. Uh, they're from Wild Tool. Uh, they're made in the USA. They're awesome. They have super gnarly sharpie teeth right there. So you can come in here, grab a hold of it. Boom. Just like that. Get that loose. That is huge.
I have to keep him happy somehow. <laughs> it's super hard. <laughs> The angry man is putting a top end in this lovely KTM 350. Just a maintenance situation, nothing, uh, anything really wrong with it, which is awesome. So, it's got everything off. Uh, and here's the loveliness of modern four strokes. This all has to come off to get that off, and that's ridiculous. But uh, yeah, going forward on that. Also gonna be doing fork seals, AER forks, or no, yeah. AER forks will kind of give you I've already got a video of that. I'll put a card right up here if you want to check that out. Uh, but we'll be doing a full service on those, including greasing the air spring and all that goodness. Um, and then I believe putting a fuel filter in the tank also. So Kenny's here. Say hi, Kenny. <laughs>
these things you, they're called riv nuts or rivet nuts they're super cool um really excited to show you guys how that works and use it here because they're just awesome so that's mainly for the van build um i got other stuff coming for the van even though it's months and months away uh but uh, i gotta get ready so that i got all the stuff ready to go to build that thing out um yeah anyway zach's almost done with the ktm top end he's dangerously close he's out talking to the matco guy probably selling his soul for tools but uh yeah, that's almost done, and then fork seals and a couple other things would be good to go. Yeah, anyway, let's get back at it. All right, guys, it's another day, and we're here ready to get after it, but first and foremost, I have to deliver coffee to Zach Sheets so that he doesn't punch me or anybody else in the face, because that is always a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Birthday month! <laughs> We are still going strong long into the month after our birthdays <laughs> because that's how we operate. Um, so yeah, we're getting after it, guys. I got the 650 bag all uh, sorted. Well, I don't have this back part sorted out. I'm going to work on that today. But I have some stuff that I'm going to pack into it. So let's take a look and see how this thing holds stuff because, uh, again, I literally have never used it. <laughs> I bought it and then never use it. So, let's pack some stuff into it. All right, start with sleeping bag. Uh, just to so you know, this is a Western Mountaineering um, zero degree Gore-Tex radical sleeping bag that I've had a long time. It's been on top of Aconcagua. Well, it hasn't been on top of Aconcagua, but it's been really close to the top of Aconcagua uh, three times. I'm going to check this in one side. My tent situation is this. I had to research uh, baby sack because that is it. That's tiny. No, it's not a tent. No, it's not super comfortable if it does pour down rain, but it will keep you dry. Also planning on finding a place where it can maybe tuck under a rock or a bush or something like that. So that goes in there. The all-important coffee gear. Um, got the AeroPress, got a jet boil, mug, coffee. This is actually worked for cooking too if I needed to, but we're not planning on doing any cooking. We're just gonna have enough stuff to make coffee. I could probably make that smaller, but I don't really need to because I have tons of room. Take some getting used to, but yeah, that's gonna work great actually. Awesome, still stand up. I'll have all my stuff, I'll have my vest on, which might be a little interesting with that right there, but I think we'll be okay. So, yeah, I think we're ready to rock. Like I said, guys, make sure you sub to the channel so you can see the Rim Rocker adventure. Because I think it is going to be quite an adventure. Because <laughs> it could rain. Uh, all sorts of stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'll finish tidying up this mount back here. And we'll be ready to rock and roll. I guess let's uh, get on with the rest of the day here. Yeah, guys, it's mail time again. I know, it's been crazy mail time uh, recently. And I just call everything mail time now. Uh, <laughs> if we get stuff, whether it be UPS or... Or anyway, I'm super stoked. Wait till you see what's in this box. Oh, yeah! Our video game just got upped. I'm pretty excited about this. Um... Yeah, I'm super stoked. I've been, I obviously love GoPros, all our writing videos, stuff like that, our earlier schlogs. Um, I think I need to bring the GoPro back into the schlog. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like that angle on certain things. I know the mic was never as good, but um, the cameras are great. So anyway, GoPro Hero 9 Black, very excited. I'm gonna be filming an in-depth review of this thing. Um, 
all the parts of it, the how it works, using it, like the video quality versus the eight and all that stuff. Uh, but that will be different videos, so make sure you subscribe if you want to see those videos by a normal dude who is a motorcyclist using it, not an influencer who got given one. I paid for this thing. Um, I used one of my old GoPros uh, for their Trade Up program, so I sent them one of my old ones. Was well, actually it was an original Hero uh, before they started putting numbers after them, <laughs> and I sent that to them and got a hundred bucks off. So that was cool. Um, also, thank you guys for subscribing. The money that I make on the ads on these videos help pay for the rest of that. So thank you so much. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, let's see what's in here. There we go. GoPro Hero 9, all wrapped up and pretty. Batteries are a little bit bigger. Of course, that is a, another giant, like, annoyance <laughs> about GoPro. Seems like every year they change the batteries a little bit, so you have to buy new batteries. Um, but whatever, that's how they make money. So, uh, just comes with one battery, camera, uh, charging cord and USB cord, one sticky now, one clippy guy, and that's it. Right, yeah. Hey everybody, G Love's here. <laughs> yeah! G Love's <laughs> here. We're talking about suspension and some other things uh, while I get my GoPro all set up. So, how you doing, G Love? I'm doing great. Yeah, he's gonna be back riding. He had a little heart thing earlier got that taken care of and now we got him back we're gonna rock and roll it's gonna be awesome can't wait yeah maybe get him out racing right yeah yeah That's the plan. hopefully get out next year and do some rocky mountain enduro circuit stuff and uh put g love on the podium yeah yeah <laughs> That'd be great. overall pro number one right there <laughs> in the seniors class that's right <laughs> so now we got our cinematic set to uh 5k wide and let's see what it looks like there we go so that's what 5k 24 frames a second looks like here at the shop um yeah i'm gonna take this thing out tonight thursday night ride tonight so i'm gonna get this thing all set up charged up ready to go and then uh, we'll take it out but yeah looks pretty good um i think i don't know what do you guys think <laughs> does it look good or not <laughs> uh can you tell much of a difference between this camera and this camera um here we'll do some side by side comparison there we go talking stuff walking around the shop all right so there we go so guys check that thing out the cool thing, one of the really cool things is it's got this front screen here, there, Gary's checking it out. Oh, cool. And that allows you to frame the shot so you can actually see what you're looking at when you um, set the thing up. So for like vlogging, like me and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So I think the next thing for this little uh, review is that we'll have to pair this thing up and shoot with the eight and the nine and we'll see which one we like better all right guys so it's the end of the week i'm shooting this on my phone because i left my memory card for my normal camera at home ah i'm a special individual um anyway i got the gopro out last night if you haven't watched the video it's pretty rad i think the camera is pretty sweet i'll put a card right up here you can check that out um, yeah, I'm really, really stoked about the Hero 9. Uh, I think it's going to be a good addition to the family here at Highland Cycles. Um, some of the things we're working on here at the end of the day, i got to put, uh, finish putting tires on the WR. It's pretty sweet. Uh, ooh, got a YZ250. We're going to be doing fork seals, tire, oh, and fixing seized chain adjuster bolts. So I'll show you how we do that. It should be really interesting and could eventually lead to me throwing things across the room um that's always a thing uh yeah i know you're watching you're seeing the quad in the background it is that time of year we might be working on a few of those 
Um, it happens every year, unfortunately. Um, but also super stoked to say that I got an amber lens on the uh, light of Daisy, which should help a lot in the dust. I also have an amber lens for my um, helmet light. Thank you, Chris Vestal at Moto Minded for those. I really appreciate it. Um, also got a white mask because I'm trying to slowly get rid of all the orange and make the bike just white and blue, kind of like a Yamaha. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to boogie because tomorrow I'm working, but then I'm going right after that. I'm taking off for the Rim Rocker Trails. Thanks for joining me for this week's slog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do, if you enjoyed what you just watched, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It would mean just a ton to us. You guys know what I'm going to say. I hope you get out, you spread the gospel of two wheels, and I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!